everyone, welcome to my sewing room again. Here we are, Tuesday soon comes round, doesn't it? Doesn't Tuesday soon come round when you've got something to look forward to? And we've got a cracking evening tonight. Um, I'm going to refresh, I've got my laptop here, show us round, Dave. Dave's on camera as usual. Um, just so you can see a little bit of what I'm doing as well. Um, so I've got the live feed here. Oh, if it comes up, do you know what? Technology is all right, isn't it, when it works? But just so that I can see, here we are. So that if anybody sends any messages through, I can answer them myself or, or type back. So um, thank you for joining us. If you're here, we'll wait a few minutes because people sort of pop along, don't they? It comes up on their phone. Um, Debbie's going live or whatever. I get it on the, all the time on mine. So we'll wait a few seconds to see if anyone else joins us. So I wanted to talk while we're waiting. Um, about what I've been doing in the sewing room this week, in my sewing room. Wondering what you've been doing in your sewing room. Um, because obviously, like we just said, a week a week goes quite quick, doesn't it? But you can get a lot of sewing done, can't you, in a week? In a week. What are you laughing at? I thought Dave was engaging with someone, but I'm not used to having a, a cameraman that I know. Anyway, let's have a look at what we're going to do tonight. <laughs> so... We're going to talk all things Trio of Hearts. So I've got my collection of some of my Trio of Hearts. So I'm going to talk more in detail about that. So we've got the patchwork cushion. We have got a key ring, uh, another patchwork cushion and the hanging hearts. OK, so I've got these in quite a lot of different fabrics. Most of those are Liberty, actually. I was just looking. That's a Liberty one. So I'm going to be talking about that because that is our star buy this week. And it's ended, it says. Hi Debbie, nice to see you again. You're still live. Oh. That's strange. Well this says you're still live. Oh no. Oh hello Shelley. Uh, we've got we've got a techno problem here. Techno, techno, techno. Yes, we're okay. Um so yeah, trio of hearts. Uh, Kath, hi Kath. Oh, I love it when Kath goes. I always feel like I've got a bit of Melton with me when Kath's here. Um, and the seaside, which is double, isn't it? Double great. I'm missing the sea at the minute. I'm think I keep saying to Dave, I need the seaside. We haven't been for ages. Anyway, so yeah, talking all things true of hearts. Um, and that's our star by this week. So I'm going to be going on to that. And I'm also going to be looking at what I've been sewing, chatting about what you've been sewing, perhaps. And then I'm going to show you, um, sort of demystify a little bit, sewing 3D objects. Um, so a 3D object could be something as, like the hearts. I'm sure you've all had a go at making hearts and things like that yourself. Um, and it could be a toy, soft toy, Rosie Rabbit, Millie Doll, that kind of thing. Um, it could be the pin cushion I'm going to talk through. It's any, anything that's not a flat shape. You could say a bag is a 3D object, but I'm thinking more of something that needs to be filled and how you then sew up the seams. So that's what I'm going to be looking at in particular tonight to try and demystify it because it's a bit scary, but it doesn't need to be. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to sew a seam on a 3D object so that it looks nice and disappears, almost invisible seam. And... Um, other things i'm going to show you how to subscribe on the website and just generally have a chit chat so please uh, if you want to join in with the chat then please do obviously you don't have to no pressure um and if you see me looking over here it's just because i'm checking to see if anybody's put any messages on or anything so um so let's get started with our trio of hearts now this this is our this is one of my patterns so if you haven't seen a pattern um that I've one of my patterns, uh, then I'm gonna quickly show you this. So this is one of my patterns. So this is what they look like. They're all newly branded with our uh, new logo and things. And I just wanted to quickly show you, cause you don't always get a chance to see these, um, what my patterns are like and how they are laid out. So at every stage of the make, there's a photo, a color photo, which I make, uh, take, at each stage as I'm writing the pattern of what I've done. Sometimes there's two photos, as you can see. I like to think that my patterns are almost as if I'm in the room with you to, you know, like hold your hand and guide you through the make. So this is, you know, this is me sort of sewing that um, 
quilting on, when I do the ironing and, and all sorts. I like them to be really, really clear uh, based on the fact that, I mean, this is one of the reasons I started writing my own patterns was because I find it hard sometimes to follow other people's patterns. They're not in your language, you know, they're not in your speak. Um, so I've just tried to make this as easy to access and read as possible. Um, so in this one, as you can see, you've got all three products. So it's the trio of hearts, is the hanging heart, the patchwork one you've seen, and the key ring. And then on each of the pages, you can see that page is um, string of hearts. That's the patchwork cushion. This is the making the key ring. And then the templates are all there for you as well. And then on the back of the pattern, it tells you what you need and any notes, which is usually, um, this is sewn using a quarter inch seam allowance. And obviously how you can contact me. So if you do um, ever get one of my patterns, and this is on, the, the kit for the Trio of Hearts is on offer this week. Um, if you, when you, if you do get one, you can always contact me and there's, there's everything in there that you need. And please email me. Sometimes people will email and say, can you just help me with this? Or uh, look at this and I'll show you my, the, my their photos and that's fab. So I'm always available um, to get back to you. So today our star buy is one of the Trio of Hearts kits. So in the kit, you, can, you get the pattern, which I've just shown you. You get three fat eights of fabric and you get a little charm bag in there. There is a lobster clasp, the key ring and a little heart charm, which looks like these. It will be a, a random charm, but it will definitely be a heart, but it might not be that one in particular, but it will be a heart similar size. That's to make your key ring with. And in this kit, or these kits, you also get six beads, uh, three bigger beads and three of the smaller beads, and they are to decorate your string with here, look. So you can just tie them off, put a knot on the end of the, when I use a doll needle to go take the ribbon through the large heart, through the middle one, through the end one, and then as you go, you just put the beads on, put a knot underneath the bead, so that they all then stay in their little place. And there's another one, look, with the beads. You can see where the knot is there in the ribbon and how then that just holds the, the beads. So you get everything other than the toy filling. Um, you get everything you need in the kit. Normally these are $14.99, but this week as our star buy, they are $9.99 a real bargain for three fat eights of Liberty fabric. They're all Liberty. The clasp, the charm, and the beads. I've got a variety of colors. Now these don't come, if you look on the website, they, these don't come in set colorways particularly. Um, they're just kind of random because I wanted to get as many different colorways in the Liberty. This is the art um, collection, the artist collection. So for example, everything matches. So you've got the greens um, and the blues and yellows here um, and the same with the beads. So everything is coordinated. When I say random, I don't mean that that kit is random. That's been specially selected by me. I've put it together, um, but there's a big wide range. So you can see they're all very different. So if you've got a color scheme in mind there and you want to order one of the kits, then please, when you uh, put one in your basket, you'll notice in the comments section, it, you could just put in there, Debbie, can I please have a pinkish one, pinky color, or can I please have a, a light blue? And I will try and match up. Other than that, I will just pick one for you. But as you can see, they are just so beautiful and pretty. And I hope you can see how much effort I take in putting those together for you. Um, these fly out when we go to the shows, when we're in London, when we're in Birmingham, everybody absolutely loves these. So I've made some more for you guys and wanted them to be the star buy of our second week of lives so that you can enjoy some of our lovely products. Because as I say, we spend a lot of time getting everything just right. Um, 
and how I, I like to receive kits and patterns and things like that. So they're available on the website. Now, while I'm talking about the website, um, some people are more comfortable using online, aren't they, than other people. Um, so I just wanted to quickly show you the website in case you haven't get, had a chance to look at it yet. So Dave will come over here. So here's the website. So if I just go to the home page. So this has only been sort of live the last couple of weeks, really. It's quite new to us, although we've been working on it since before Christmas. So we feel very familiar with it. You'll see up here, it tells you that postage on orders over £50 is free. So if you make an order that's a penny over £50, then that will go automatically into free postage, which will save you 285 That's our flat rate for postage. And then you can see all of our different things that we've got going on. Bit about what what's uh, like this week's star by. There's our trio of Hearts Liberty Kit, which I've just shown you. Uh, other popular patterns. So this works automatically with what other popular kits people are buying and patterns, which is great. Uh, latest technique video that is on YouTube. So if you've not subscribed to me on YouTube, please do so. Um, and that I, I don't do as much on YouTube as I used to do because I prefer doing the lives with you guys on a Tuesday. But there's plenty there to see and some crochet videos as well. Uh, a bit further down, you can see our next workshop. Obviously, that's tonight, telling you about our live show. And uh, my next visit to Sewing Street is on the 21st of May on a Saturday. Um, so that's always on there as well to tell you what's coming up. Or if I've got a more local event, more local workshop, that will be in there. Um, and also um, the um, exhibitions and shows that we go to. A bit about what our customers think, which is always nice. Um, and then a bit about my blog, uh, latest news, what's going on, where we are, what we're doing. And then this was a bit I wanted to show you, really. Please um, subscribe to our newsletter. I haven't sent one out yet because I'm just waiting for people to subscribe because, it, as I say, it's very new. Uh, so lots of you have transferred over from our old site uh, and have signed up so and lots of new customers which is just amazing so thank you so much and um, if you don't want to subscribe to the newsletter but you want to ask us a question or you've subscribed and you want a question answering then you can contact me any way you like um, on Facebook or, or at the website for example just by on the contact us page or you can fill this in with put your question in and then that comes direct to my email so you can always get in touch with me uh, and obviously follow us on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. So lots and lots going on. And then when you go on there, it's really simple. Bit about us. Shop. They're the events and workshops, news and obviously your basket and checking out. And then if you go on to shop. So if you wanted to have a look today at the patterns and kits, especially the star buy, you go on to patterns and kits. We've got haberdashery essentials here. And remember, I only sell things that I actually use. I don't sell gimmicky things or things just off the shelf. I only sell products I use. Um, and you can see all our patterns and kits here. Um, and here is the Trio of Hearts. It's in alphabetical order, so it's there. Look, Trio of Hearts Liberty Fabric Kit, 9.99 because it's our star buy. And if you click on that, then you can just pop that in your basket if you wanted it. So that's a bit about our website. Question from Kath. How long does delivery normally take for something like the heart kit? Oh, good question, Kath. As if we get the order before two o'clock, we will post it that day. So for example, we had an order today came in around half past one and it was packaged um, nicely. Uh, I always put a personalised note in and that was taken to the post office first class today. So we will try and get it to you. What happens with the post office? I've noticed uh, a lot of deliveries tend to be a bit slower at the moment, don't they? We can't obviously control that, but we always send our po po um, packages out first class. So hopefully that will come to you straight away. So um, let's have a look at what I've been doing this week because I've got I feel like I've just non-stop sewing to the point where my hands have been aching this week really sore um, I wonder if you get that as well so one of the things that I finished making that I'm so excited to bring you is my 
This is an EPP project. So we're covering EPP projects next week. So this is my new pattern that's literally with the printers now, but you can put your order in if you want one. And it's a scrappy hexi quilt made through using EPP. And the special thing about this, you'll notice it's bordered in white. So these are all my old scraps. Of course, if you wanted to use a collection of your favorite fabrics, then you could, you don't have to use your scraps. I just wanted to make a project that does use up your scraps and doesn't look as if you're using up your scraps, you know? And then on the back, um, I've used a contrast in white, the same as I've used for the border, which is, a, you know, these white on white, let me show you. Absolutely love these white on white fabrics. In fact, I'll put some fat quarters and um, half meters on the website because they are fabulous. Um, and then this is the back, which has got the scrappy border. Can you see? So it's white backing fabric, the white on white. So it doesn't, it's not that stark white, you know, it's just got the nice floral touch. And then the binding is scrappy as well. And then I've also put a little signature flower there, the grandmother's garden flower on the back. So I've um, sewn that together using EPP and then I've appliqued that onto the back. Uh, so that's another little technique that you'll learn with this quilt if you don't already do that. Um, and that's just placed on the back sort of randomly, but I thought it sat really nicely there because I like the back of the quilt, the reverse. We all like the front, don't we? And I hear a lot of people, you know, sort of almost, oh, well, it's only for the back. It's, I only need some fabric for the back, Debbie. And you think, okay, yeah, I get that. And you perhaps wouldn't want to spend the time doing the EPP for the back, but when you're under the blanket, you see the back, don't you? You know what I mean? So when I, if I'm using it, I mean, I have a blanket on my knees all the time. I did this afternoon. Uh, it's a bit chilly, isn't it, at the moment? Um, and I like to be cosy. I like it to be nice. So when I pull the blanket up like this, I want to see it nice. I don't want to see some old, not old, but you know, some not as nice as the front. I want it to be as nice, but just a bit different. Um, so I'm I'm really pleased with how that turned out. I had the idea and I thought, yes, I'm doing that on this scrappy quilt. Now this, the history with this scrappy quilt is I started it and I know the, the exact corner where I started it, which is here. This was started with this blue gingham because gingham is one of my favorite prints. This started in uh, finally two years ago in lockdown. I mean, obviously not lockdown, lockdown, but when we could go out, we were allowed to go out. We booked a holiday in a um, static caravan in Filey because it's one of my favorite places. And you know, I can't think what it was called. Was it stay in the van or something, Dave? Something like that. Stay, um, so none of the bars were open, none of the restaurants were open. You had to just stay in your van because obviously it was socially distanced. Two years ago, pretty much. Um, so there's a lot of history with this quilt. Now, obviously it's not taken me two years. Don't be put off by that. Think, crikey, that's slow sewing, Debbie. I just pick it up. Uh, we've got a little camper van. So I take it with me, do a little bit of sewing. If we go out for the day, put it away. And I might not touch it for two or three weeks. And then I get it out when I, as and when I feel like it. So it's been a, a process really. Um, and then I've just kind of finished it off the last couple of weeks because I wanted to bring it to you guys and I wanted to take it to the show in Malvern where we're going next week, the quilt show. So this will be coming along with us as, as well as the pattern and the pa pattern um, is available for you guys on the website now so that you can grab yours first before they all disappear hopefully at Malvern. It's a tricky one because we take lots and lots of, of patterns and kits and things to the shows um and we may be you know quite away from home birmingham's not too far for us but if we're a long way from home in london or, or malvern next week then it's a long way to come and get extra stuff so we take loads but it does disappear quickly so um oh my little light's gone off look this is my little native clip-on light native lighting it's my clip-on light so that just clips on there it's brilliant for my ironing table so let me move all my bits and bobs out of the way and I'll show you. Have we got any more questions, Dave? Just a 
moment. Love that quilt, Shelley, thank you. Um, Jackie, that's lovely. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I absolutely love, love that. Um, love that. I love scrappy, the scrappy look. I love small shapes, hexagons, hearts, and two and a half inch squares. They're my favorites, which is where, you know, the idea for the cushion came from, which is obviously in this kit because it's patchwork. So these are two and a half inch squares, um, but it's using the grid, the gridded interfacing, which I showed last week. Um, so that's a really simple way to patchwork. But as I talked about quite a lot last Tuesday, I love just sewing two and a half inch squares together and making a patchwork with the machine or with your hexagons. So oh, it's run out of charge. It's rechargeable like that one. I have it on all the time. Um, or I like to hand sew, I love hand sewing, but my knuckles are not enjoying it as much as uh, they used to. So what I'm going to show you tonight is, um, oh, I'll come back to that. That's something else I've been doing this week, is seams on 3D objects, because I love 3D objects. Um, I love 3D objects. I'm coming to this in a second. I love 3D objects. Um, but they can sometimes be tricky to sew and the seams can be tricky. Now I used to make a lot of hearts like this one, let me show you. And I would sew the heart, fairly straightforward. And then you can see here, I would leave this two, inch and a half, two inch turning gap here and then fill, the, fill it, fill the heart with toy filling, turn the seam, the quarter inch seam in on itself and then I would clip it, usually with a little um, quilter's clip, because I can't manage without these. So I'd clip it, imagine like that, if that was open. And then I'd just slip stitch over the top to sew up that seam, which seems pretty straightforward. But when you um, sort of ruffle it and you smooth it out and you iron the seam, you're still left, if you can see it, with a, a bit of a wobbly edge. So this edge is nicely sewn and it's quite straightforward and this edge is a bit rough. So I made a lot of hearts a couple of years ago, made absolutely tons of hearts for Christmas. The tree was just full of hearts that I'd made um, and that's how they were finished. So it's got to be a better way to finish a seam on a 3D object than that. And there is. And the way I do it, I'm going to show you to tonight is to sew two pieces of fabric together usually for the back piece but use whatever fabric it's going to be less obvious on so sometimes for example this one this is what i would call the front of this heart because it's the nice florally liberty fabric beautiful when you turn it over you can see the seam there so i do the seam now on the back but with hindsight I should have done that seam on this front because actually you'd have, it would have been less visible than it is on the blue. Do you see what I mean? But that is a good example of what I'm showing you tonight. So like that one, because both sides are floral, you can't really see which one has got the seam and same with that one. So on those ones where, the, where they're both patterned and floral, you can't actually see a seam and both the edges on both sides are perfectly finished because you aren't having, you're not leaving the turning gap there and you're not leaving, you're not having the sewing, the outside sewing and so it's less visible. So really, really easy technique this one which I want to show you tonight. So I've just got a bit of fabric here, let me move a little bit of, um, move these little hearts out of the way, make a bit of space and I'm going to press this because you can see that it's a little creased having been in my um, box of fabrics. Give it a bit of a squirt to best press because you can see how creased that is so if you if you're not familiar with um starch or i i like the best press and you see how it makes it so easy just to iron out those creases you can see because i went a bit heavy on the spray there you can still see it but the iron dries it really quickly and away it goes so i love sewing with um freshly ironed fabric it just feels like it's mine once I've sewn, um, pressed it. 
and I'm going to cut right through the center so imagine this was going to be the heart then I'm just going to cut right through the center so I've cut the fabric bigger about an inch maybe two inches bigger just so I've got plenty um, than what I need it to be okay let me move all my bits and bobs away from the machine there for later I'll show you those in a second and let's go over to the machine and I'll show you I'm, I'm hooked up here with my electronics I will show you um, how to sew these together and how the seam's going to work so just two equal sizes of fabrics just a second while my machine warms up I've not been on it today um, what's that about so my machine uh, automatically remembers the settings I had it on the last time I used it so for a normal straight stitch which let's face it that's what we all use so I've got this all singing all dancing machine which I absolutely love don't get me wrong it's got all these you know hundreds of stitches different designs 98% of the time I'm on a straight stitch number one using a quarter inch seam simple don't feel intimidated by the machine so it, uh, my normal setting if I just put this onto a straight stitch then that's what it will be the position of the needle will be in the center 3.5 and it automatically defaults the stitch length to 2.4 how I like to sew is with a quarter inch seam and I don't like a quarter inch foot I, I just feel quite restricted by it that's the idea I'm not that keen on it so what I do is I turn I change the setting on my machine and I know on mine yours might be different if I set the needle in position to 5.6 then that moves the needle across to the right so that the distance between there and the edge of the foot is exactly a quarter of an inch so that's what my machine's always on always have the stitch length I do at 2.4 because it's quite small um, but nice and nice and tight for a really strong secure seam and if I'm doing top stitching I would just extend it to 3.2 so that that's more of a decorative stitch and uh, it does so it's not holding a seam together the same um, and also if you're doing something like quilting it won't sort of pucker up all the fabric it will just make it nice and neat so that's a little bit about what I'm doing now that having sprayed that with the best press I can feel straight away how much more firm if you like that fabric is it feels really nice um, but soft to touch as well so I'm going to line up those seams so you, as you saw I just cut it with a pair of scissors um, you could obviously use your rotary cutter and a ruler make it nice and straight as long as you seam straight don't worry too much about this if you're confident sewing a straight seam then that's fine so I'm just going to sew that seam straight down quarter of an inch put my slipper back on I wonder if you're a one shoed um, sewer I always have my slippers on and uh, but I like to sew barefoot so my right slipper is nearly always off it's gone a bit dark here hasn't it now that uh, lights run out of battery so I set the seam by sewing this um, pressing that seam of stitches that I've just sewn because then that makes those stitches part of your fabric rather than being on top of your fabric open it out and I very rarely do this but I'm going to open the seams and press them I like to use my little magic wand especially while the fabric's still warm because that really presses that seam open see how it works a bit like a clapper it's really good and then I'll just give that a good press with my mini iron so that seam is now open and I'll press it on the right side as well now I've not worried here about pattern matching as you can see I wouldn't worry too much about that for where you're putting the seam but you could pattern match if that was you know important to you that's not a problem and then with your quick unpick um, 
you need to get this and I always go from the right side because if you imagine that uh, this was on the back of this heart so I would now sew the right side of the heart to, to this fabric sew around the shape, cut it out and you'd be left with this um, and it obviously would be inside out it would be that way round okay so that's the way I'm going to show you in fact not the other way so I'm then going to use my quick and pick, just go in and imagine if it was something like this heart, you'd perhaps do just a couple of inches. I'm just going to do about three or four inches to show you. And then that is your turning gap for your filling. So if this was a heart or if it was a round cushion, you could then fill that with your toy filling and then you would get your needle and thread and hand sew that together from the right side and look how beautiful that is nice and creased and pressed so it's very nice and neat already and then you could just do a simple ladder stitch just taking a couple of threads of each side of the fabric and then pull the thread up and that would just close it together like that and you would hardly see that seam especially if I was doing this I would choose a thread very similar to that grey so that it just disappears into the fabric like this with the pink. So that's the pink seam, I've used pink thread to match and you can barely see it. And then as I said, where you've got the um, more patterned or floral fabric, you can't see it at all, it just blends in. And don't forget, once you've hand sewn, same as before, press your seam with your iron because what that does is it sets the stitches, it sets the seam. So those hand stitches become more embedded into the fabric and it becomes one rather than them sitting on top of the fabric. So always remember to press. This is why, if you, if you, weren't, if you didn't join me last week, this is why I have my layout like this. I've got my sewing machine here. Um, I've got everything close to hand. So I've only got a small room here, but even if I had a really big room, this is how I would lay it out. I like to look out the window so I can see a bit of a view. I've got all my tools and bits and bobs here so I don't have to reach. It's not about being lazy, it's just about being more efficient and having things to hand. So I like my rotary cutter there, I like my scissors on my board. I've got my threads up here, bits and bobs. I've got my ironing table here and my iron plugged in under the table so it's always here. So all I'm doing when I'm sewing is sewing here and then ironing and pressing here. And I also use this um, out. So I've also got my um, rotating cutting mat here. So if I need to cut something out, usually I'll cut downstairs on the sort of, is it, how long is it? Oh, 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 are we back? There you go, you're back. Yes, we're back. Oh, we had a connection problem. Are we, are we okay? Yes, we're good. We're good. Sorry about that if we lost you. Um, yeah, so I've got my my machine here and then my ironing station and then I just use my little rotating cutting mat. Um, I don't always find these particularly good at rotating. I don't know about you. They fit together. Hang on, is that the wrong way around? That could be why. But even, <laughs> it's like magnetised together. It just, it never, that's better. But it sometimes it comes off. It's very loose. It's almost a little magnet. But if you want to then rotate round, if you were cutting a square or something, you could just shh, shh. Let me show you, instead of making the sound effects. <laughs> Doing sound effects, I'm very good at those. Um, so obviously you'd have your ruler, but instead of cutting, because you never cut to order yourself, especially if you're clumsy like me, never ever cut this way. You always want to be cutting, ideally away from you like that take your safety catch or put your safety catch on and then rather than turning the fabric you can then just turn your board so I have this one upstairs with me um, so that I've got it to hand so I don't do a lot like I said I don't do a lot of cutting upstairs most of it I do on the island in the kitchen downstairs um, but that's handy and then because it's portable I can just take it off and put them and then I've got um, my ironing station. So let's have a look at some comments. Thank you for joining in. So Shelley says, I'm the same. My sewing room is in my conservatory. Lovely. Look out into the garden. Have my sewing machine and ironing station. Same as you with the swivel chair. Yeah. 
perfect, isn't it, Shelley? It's absolutely perfect. You've just got to set yourself up, haven't you? Um, so that you're comfortable and it's just easy. It's got to be easy. It's got to be comfortable. And like you, I spend a lot of time sewing. So it's my main space, really. So I hope you found that little tip useful. Um, I'm going to show you now just one other thing, one last thing before I go about something else I did this week because I forgot to show you. So Dave will show you up on the wall, I've got my pattern. I did put this on Facebook and Instagram the other week um, that I made from the logo. So this is my logo here, the DH and the elephant. And then this was my design where I've drawn out lots and lots of hexagons and on the actual logo, this, is a, this isn't finished, this is just a rough design. This here is bright pink, this kind of pink, and the elephant is dark blue like this. So what I've tried to do is obviously show those colours behind the design in this um, little uh, EPP project that I'm making so that I can take it to the shows. So when we've got the stand and the stall uh, ready, we can have that displayed. So I made a star on the hexagons last week and I wanted to show you, I'm so sorry the light's not very good here now. Um, I think you can see that. So let me just get the light nice and bright so it helps. Is that better? Or is that worse? Yeah, that's better. So this is the start. So if you imagine, the hexagons are a little bit bigger than my design but this is the start in, in this right hand, uh, left hand corner. So I've got my white on white. See what I mean by these white on whites, how lovely they are. They're so intricate, look. And I just find them amazing. I could do a whole quilt in them, to be honest. And then you can see I've done some footy cutting of the hexagons here. Because elephants is obviously the, I just love elephants and they, they go with what my brand's about, just calming, mindful, being relaxed and using sewing to help with that. Um, I've got the little elephants look, so I fussy cut those individual hexagons to make mummy and the baby one look. And then a bit more fussy cut in here, so I fussy cut these three so that you can see the elephant there with this trunk. A little bit of Tilda, of course. So these are all my favorite, bit of calf facet here, bit of uh, Liberty, a uh, bit of Tilda here, look, the brolly. Um, so yeah, I wanted to show you that because I'm going to be focusing on EPP next week. That's the reverse. But don't be put off. If you've never done EPP before and you think, gosh, Debbie, that looks like hard work. It's really not. Uh, that's my little box look. So I prepare all the little hexagons. So they come from, I cut my own um, shapes because I like them to be a particular weight of, of uh, card and then cover them in fabric. So I've got all the colours. So you can see I'm focusing at the moment on this left hand side which is the pinks so whites and pinks at the moment so they're all ready and greys and then you can see here i've just started off look getting a few um blues ready for the other half um and i love it i absolutely love it so i can't wait for next week to show you that but yeah i just wanted to show you quickly um perhaps shouldn't have shown you that because of course next week we'll be looking at how much how much i've managed to get done between now and then let me have a bit of tea, it's gone cold. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So please don't forget, are there any more comments, Dave, do you, that you can see okay. before we sign yeah. off? Um, so thank you for commenting and joining in. It just ma it makes it so nice and I, I'm, I really appreciate you joining us. Um, so next week we will be doing EPP, New Star Buy, and uh, other tips and techniques and just a nice job, general chit chat. So thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter on the website. Contact us if you need anything or want to chat. And I will see you online, no doubt, on Facebook and Instagram between now and then. Otherwise, I'll see you next Tuesday. Same time, same place. See you then.